You can't print on a wobbly table. Or can you? Should you print on solid ground? Let's see! I loaded up a resonance test model and cranked up the acceleration and speed to try and maximize the differences in the prints. The wobbly table print was going better than expected at first, but then I noticed some quality issues. The wall wasn't straight and there was quite a bit of ringing on it. So I restarted the print on the ground, only to be a bit disappointed. The wall was straight this time, but the ringing was still present, not really improving from the wobbly table print. I decided to redo my testing with normal speeds and a useful file like this cleaning tool for the Z-axis rods. This is where things got weird. The wobbly table printed a better looking part. I think it's because the floor print had a slight draft which could explain the warping and consequently the layer shift later on. Otherwise the ringing is gone on both prints. If not for the warping, the prints would be identical. What do you think is the reason for this unexpected result? Leave a comment. Here's how I went from this to this in just a few steps. TPU is notoriously hard to print with, especially when not supported properly. Now let's see how I solve this problem. I increased the number of walls, changed the sparse infill pattern from grid to aligned, rectilinear and increased its density. And most importantly, having 25 solid layers before doing the wall did the trick. If you're still experiencing problems and want to get better results, you can always try drying your filament and slowing down the print speeds. Leave your thoughts in the comments. This setting often goes unnoticed, but can drastically improve the quality of your 3D prints. It's called layer time. The exact name can vary depending on your slicer and the version. It ensures the previous layer has enough time to cool down and solidify before the next layer, reducing warping, sagging and distortion. This would be a big help for any small files or even a base mode print that quickly finish layers. But don't spend too much time on a layer because that can cause blobbing or sagging. Sometimes a great workaround would be to print two or more parts simultaneously to give the layers enough time to cool down. Increasing layer time will also slow down your prints, sometimes significantly. Take this into consideration when experimenting with the right setting for your 3D printer and the model you're printing. Different printers have different cooling capabilities, so keep that in mind. And until next time, happy printing! A lot of people think they know, but do you really know how to maintain your 3D printer? Let's find out! Number 1. Regularly inspect all components for damage or wear and clean the dust and other junk off the machine. While you're at it, you can tighten any loose component. If there's a part you suspect will fail soon, don't hesitate to order a spare so you don't get caught off guard. Number 2. Inspect the power cables and connectors for damage and ensure they are tightly connected. A bent power cable could be a fire hazard so go check on those and make sure everything's good. Number 3. Lubricate the parts that require lubrication every so often. This will prevent the motors from overheating. Keep in mind that WD-40 isn't an option. Number 4. Clean your nozzle by heating it up and powering off your printer before using a wire brush because metal can short electrical components. Number 5. Level your bed after moving your 3D printer. Number 6. Print yourself a dust filter. It's gonna come in handy. Number 7. You might be missing out on some new features and improvements. Update your printer's firmware. That's all for now. Did you know these tips before? Make sure you leave a comment.